Hey guys, welcome back. So tonight I brought home a Honda generator. It's an EG2200X. I don't know much about these. I haven't actually worked on one of these before. Uh, this generator is pretty old. I think it was made in the mid or early 90s. You know, and with that said, I mean, this thing is in pristine condition. Um, there's really no rust to speak of. You know, I took a quick look in the tank and I mean, it looks brand new in here. You know, I've seen generators that are a lot younger than this with completely rusted out tanks. So uh, someone took very good care of this. Um, and to my surprise, the seller actually started it for me and uh, it sounded pretty good. Um, you know, we did let it run for a little bit, shut it down, and then actually couldn't get it started again. So there might need to be a little bit of carb work. Um, you know, I checked the oil, it is quite dirty, so it at least needs that, but the air filter looks good. Um, the power output, haven't measured yet, so we'll take a look at that together. You know, the only other thing that seemed a little bit odd was there's a lot of um, exhaust staining on the top of that valve cover. So potentially there's a issue with the muffler, so I might dig into that a bit. You know, but overall, this thing's in pretty good shape. And, um, you know, I'm not sure this might be a quick video, but let's bring it outside. We'll uh, start it up, you know, do a few tests on it and uh, go from there. with really no load. I'm going to try a 1500 watt load and see what happens. That's pretty good. Yeah, so it started really easy, and uh, I was able to turn the choke off. You know, it's not running perfectly, and, uh, you know, I started to choke it a little to see if that made a difference, and it didn't. You know, it's almost really not worth digging into because it is running quite well. Uh, the other issue, too, with this exhaust, you know, this carbon buildup here, I did put my hand right there. And it was very hot air blowing down right onto this cover. So, yeah, I think there is something uh, going on there, although I couldn't, still can't quite tell where it's coming from. So, um, anyway, going to bring this back in the garage and service the carb and see if I can get a better look at that exhaust, you know. But other than that, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with this. All right, so if anything... I think this generator might be running a little bit rich. Um, you know, I do see potentially an adjustment right there. Uh, at least I hope that's what it is. You know, a lot of the newer generators, you can't adjust the jetting. You know, banking on the fact that this is a early to mid 90s generator that maybe there's an adjustment on it. Um, you know, but by judging by the color of the fuel that came out, you know, I'm not expecting to see much in this carburetor in the way of dirt, but, you know, if it has been on there for 20 to 25 years, then, you know, I, I don't know if it's ever been cleaned. So it's probably a worthwhile exercise to uh, just pop this thing off and see uh, what's going on inside.
right, so I'm not sure if this is by design or not, but you can see on this post, there's this ridge right here and it's thicker from there to there. Anyway, the carburetor won't slide off. Uh, when it hits this point, it stops. You know, I've tried cleaning it off, thinking maybe uh, just something was, you know, not allowing it to slide off. But, you know, it, it seems like this might be designed, like to actually remove the carburetor, you'd have to remove the post. And um, I don't think I'm gonna do that. Um, what I'm gonna try to do is just drop the bowl. You know, that'll let me clean up the needle and seat. Um, and I can also clean the pilot jet um, without removing anything. You know, and since it's running pretty well, I'm really not expecting that I'm going to need to take it off and do it in the ultrasonic. So uh, let me just get the, uh, the bowl and the uh, low speed jet out and clean them up and put them back. Yeah, that doesn't look good. I think I'm gonna have to take that post off and uh, clean this properly. That was actually embarrassingly easy. Yeah, I'm very surprised that this ran at all. and the high-speed jet is right there. So need to unscrew that, and then we should also be able to slide the emulsion tube out. Okay. Yeah, I think that need to be cleaned. <laughs> Amazing that it ran as well as it did. Okay, and I think this is a mixture screw for the, uh, the low speed jet. I'm just gonna turn it in and see where it's set right now, and that's what I'll set it back to. And a half. So it was one and a half turns out. Okay, all things considered, I think this came out pretty good.
Done. Let's put it back on and see what it does. So I don't think it's coming across in the video, kind of what I'm hearing. It's just not running smooth. You know, clearly it's struggling with something. And, um, you know, I popped the air cleaner off just to see if that was a restriction. It was not. I shut the fuel off while it was running. And about 30 seconds later, it just smoothed right out and ran pretty much perfectly right up until it ran out of fuel. So that tells me that maybe the carb is overfilled. You know, maybe that needle and float um, you know, is allowing the level to be too high and um, causing the issue. The uh, symptoms of the rich condition, you know, is black smoke, among other things, and soot. And I think that explains, you know, what we were seeing here. You know, I did clean this cover off a bit, but if you remember, <clears throat> this whole area was quite black. You couldn't even see the silver. You know, even it extended all the way to the gas tank, some of that soot. So this clearly has been like this for a while and could probably keep running like this, you know, without too much of an issue. But, you know, this, this carbon buildup is also happening inside the engine on the valves and the head. And eventually it could lead to, you know, loss of compression due to valves not seating properly. So ideally I would like to get this running the way it should. I did price out an OEM carb and it was about 90 bucks and quite honestly, I mean, that's, I spent less on this generator, so I'm not anxious to go out and, and buy that, although it is still an option. Um, I did get a China clone carb. It's not an exact match, but it'll bolt on just fine. Whether it'll run perfectly uh, is yet to be seen, but you know, worst case, it's gonna give me some options. It'll be another carb uh, with whatever jets it comes with. You know, I can measure those jets, measure the jets that are in here potentially swap the, the needle and float, you know, and, and the jets and find some combination that it's happy with. And, you know, I was also thinking, um, you know, I had a Duramax a few months ago that was running lean and that's a Honda clone. And I still have that carburetor, uh, which is right here. It looks like it should actually be able to bolt right on in place of this. Uh, the reason why I haven't done that is because there are some subtle differences. Uh, 
this is supposed to be a 90 degree inlet for the fuel, you know, so that's one thing. And then the other thing is there's no integrated fuel shutoff. So I'd be losing a few features, I guess, if I were to permanently use this car. But, you know, again, this has its own jets that should be compatible as well as a needle and float, which is compatible. So if the new carb doesn't run right, you know, I'll measure up all the jets and try a different combination and bolt it back on and, you know, keep doing that until I find something that works. So anyway, I'm not going to bore you with uh, bolting on additional carbs. I will just turn you back on when we're ready to, uh, to test. Okay, so I broke into the Doromax carb, the original carb, and the new cheap China carb. And I was just sizing up the main jets and the Doromax and the new China carb are both here, uh, which I believe is a size 69. And then the original one is here at 71, which is the smaller of the three. So I did run the generator with the new carb, pretty much the same thing, just a little bit rich, went under no load. Uh, when under load, it runs great. So I'm tempted not to touch it and just leave good enough alone. But I do have one more thing I can try, which is just this uh, original jet, which is a two gauge sizes smaller. So maybe that'll make a difference. All right, so let's see if this combination is any better. I think I'm heading in the right direction. Unfortunately, I do not have any smaller jets to put in this. Um, it is running a little bit better, and I stress a little. It is still a bit rich, um, but I think I'm beating a dead horse here. You know, this machine, for its age, runs quite well. Uh, even under load, it smooths right out and sounds great. Um, starts easy. I uh, really can't complain, so I think I'm going to call it at this point. Thanks for watching. All right, so I thought that was it. Uh, you know, I, I realized I had forgotten to actually check the spark plug, and uh, this is the plug I pulled out of it. Um, it is the right plug. It's an NGK uh, BPR6ES, but the gap was huge on this. It was almost 0.45. It's supposed to be around 0.3. So, um, you know, I did regap this one, uh, but I did have another plug very similar to this. It was a um, 5ES which is a slightly hotter plug, uh, but I thought I'd try that first. And as you can see, again, it probably doesn't come through in the video, but it solved the issue. It's running uh, pretty much perfectly under no load now. And, um, you know, that's all it was. So, you know, maybe I should have checked that sooner, but uh, I'm happy that it's working now. Thanks for watching.